we're totally on the same page with using food as medicine because it's it's something that everybody does have control over, right? We eat several times a day and we get to choose what we put in our body. All right, hey everybody, Dr. Josh Axe here. Welcome to our show today. Today I have, I have a very special guest, someone that I've watched on television for some time, been so impressed with her work and it is Joy Bauer. Uh, she is really an expert in nutrition. Um, we're gonna talk today about, hey, can you live to be 100? We're gonna talk about how you can feel amazing and she's also gonna train us on how to chow, chow down on some insanely delicious food and also, she's authored a new book. And in, in fact, she is known as a celebrity chef. She's the number one New York Times bestselling author. She's also the expert on the Today Show. She's the health expert there. And really fortunate to have her today. Uh, Joy, hey, welcome to the show. Hey, Josh. So great to be here. You hear my, my dog barking in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll probably... You're a, you're a big dog guy, so... <laughs> Yes, that's right. So I, uh, I've got a, a you now a, a new baby here at the, at the house, and we've got a couple dogs. So there's lots of lots of noises. We may we may hear people chiming in here. So oh, I hope so, and I hope we get a sneak uh, preview, a little look at your new beauty. Oh yeah, yeah I'll, I'll sit. I'll I'll, I'll uh, I may call, call my wife here sometime. If not, we'll we'll pop on here soon. Um, oh, that it, would be a huge congratulations! Like that's the good stuff, right? That's yeah, oh yeah. I'm so happy for you. Thanks so much. Man, we just couldn't be any more excited. Well, Joy, uh, I've got your new book here. This thing is awesome. In fact, I started going through, I'm probably gonna make a recipe from it this week, and it is uh, superfood. So 150 recipes for eternal youth. So we're gonna talk about some of the top superfoods today. Before we do that though, what really led you down the path of nutrition and, uh, and really doing this in the media? Um, well, I think I, I was pretty much born with a passion for health, and I'm sure you can relate to that as well. I did every single sport under the sun. I was a competitive gymnast. Um, and originally I went to school to become a pediatrician. So my undergrad was pre-med. And when I graduated from undergrad, I sort of like took a little bit of a sabbatical and I got a graduate degree in clinical nutrition. And it was one of those like serendipitous moments I was in my first class and the light bulb went off. I just um, absolutely love food. As much as I was born with a passion for health, I was a huge foodie as well. I love all sorts of textures and flavor combinations. I love experimenting in the kitchen. I make great big messes in my mom's kitchen from I would say elementary school all the way on. And I also, um, again, just love all things health. I have the gift of gab. And I just wanted to set out on a path to really help, help people. So way back in the beginning of my career, way before media, I never thought about doing television or writing books. I got a job as the director of nutrition for pediatric cardiology at Mount Sinai Medical Center. And um, it was perfect for me because it was within the health field. I was still working with children and families. And that was sort of like the beginning of it. I taught at NYU. I did a little bit of writing. Um, I was in clinical at the hospital. And then the TV sort of fell from the sky because um, my I started writing more and more for magazines, for newsletters. I was doing a lot of lecturing. And then um, probably similar to you, my publications, books, started landing on the desks of various producers. And then like television just sort of started happening. But really, I've loved every single job I've ever had in the field. I feel so lucky that it found me. Um, and here I am playing with food for a living. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I love it. Well, one of the things I love so much about what you've done is you've, you're, you're able to give people great nutritional advice for you know, many different types of health conditions, but also make the recipes taste amazing, which is so fantastic. And so one of the other things that I uh, love to ask experts too, because one of the things I know about you, we have a mutual friend and and Pam McWilliams, and I know that again, yeah. as you said, you you're a health nut as well. So you practice what you preach. Walk us through, like, what does your day look like? Like, what do you typically like? What do you have for breakfast? Uh, you know, what are you going to do tonight for dinner? What are some of your favorite? What, what do you typically do during your average day? Um, so. 
nowadays they're a little bit um, atypical, right? From the type of days that we usually have because I've been quarantined with my three kids and my dog and my husband for hard to believe over two months now. I'm shooting everything right out of my kitchen. Like who knew we could get away with being so scrappy. But in terms of food, I would say um, a lot of things remain typical. So in the morning, I'm a big eggs girl. I, I usually open my fridge and whatever leftover vegetables I have, I work into like a big fat omelet. Or I'm also known for enjoying some Greek yogurt with some fruit. And I usually put nuts or seeds or um, uh, fresh berries on top of that as well. And then for lunch, a great big gigantic salad, like kitchen sink salad with whatever I have laying around. I love things like chickpeas and black beans and um, all sorts of that colorful vegetables. And I'll whip up some sort of a homemade do-it-yourself dressing. It could be a citrus vinaigrette or um, something like a little bit more involved, like a creamy ranch made with good for you ingredients. And for snacks, I'll generally grab I'm, a, I'm like a nutaholic. It could be pistachios or almonds or um, toasted pecans or walnuts. I love nuts. I love nuts. Um, but not to take away from seeds. I like pumpkin seeds. I like sunflower seeds. I also like the butters. So it could be um, an apple sliced with nut butters. So a lot of different things for snacks. And then dinner is where I like to get creative. So when my work is done, um, that's when I like to experiment. And for dinner, we really vary it up. So it can be anything from um, crispy coconut shrimp with an Asian dipping sauce. Or um, last night, we made this delicious, um, like a whole grain penne bolognese with loads of vegetables. And we did half as a vegan and half with some turkey meat. So like anything goes. I'm all about dinner. That's where I get to be creative. I love it. You know, one of the things I think it's so important too, that sometimes people miss is it's this creativity that makes uh, being healthy fun. Like one of the things I decided I wanted to try this past week was try making my own vegan cheese sauce. And yeah. so, you know, I took some tahini and some miso and then red bell peppers and carrots and nutritional yeast and garlic powder and, and made my own cheese sauce. And I couldn't believe like my mother-in-law was here because you know Chelsea just had the baby. And so mother-in-law was here. And so we made this with rice, macaroni noodles, some grass-fed beef. And she's like, this tastes like the old school like hamburger helper I used to make, only it's healthy. And so, but I mean, I think that's so important that just we're, we're creative, you try new things. And that's why, again, I want to give a shout out here to your new book. This is a book, your new book, Superfood. And if you guys want to check out Joy's new book, it's in bookstores nationwide. But for a lot of us, ordering online right now is going to be the easiest way to get this book. So just go to Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com and just check out Joy Bauer, her new book, Superfood. And these recipes are really created to help you age more slowly, look and feel younger. It's an anti-inflammatory diet. So I want to encourage everybody, check out the book, go and get it online. And you know what, Josh, you mentioned the sauce and um, I want to exchange recipes with you because yeah. I am salivating over here. I'm definitely trying that sauce and I love using nutritional yeast for a variety of things. It gives you that cheesy, salty, um, umami type of flavor. In the book, I have one for you to try. It's a, it's a creamy vegan Alfredo mm -hmm. and I do it with soaked cashews. Yeah. Which, which are really neat right now because I don't think cashews get enough love. Cashews are the nut of choice when it comes to zinc, which is an immune booster, which we're all looking for right now. But but you, like as you were describing, we have a lot of other similar ingredients in there. And all I do is, like you did, I chuck everything right into a high-speed blender yeah. or your food processor, and you get this luxurious cream sauce that you can't even believe doesn't have cheese. I was gonna say another one you have here with this no noodle cheesy spinach lasagna is that, well again, there's lasagna in here that's doing a similar thing. So again, if you guys want healthy lasagna, check out Joy's <laughs> new book, it's awesome. We got a question here on Facebook, Joy. I'd love to get your, your, your thoughts on. Somebody Great. said, uh, Joy and Dr. Axe, what are your top superfoods for colon health and digestive health? So that's, that's a great question. Um, so I think that my mind automatically will go to um, pre and probiotics, of course, and also to calcium 
and vitamin D. So that, that's quite an assortment of nutrients. Um, you know, certainly kefir, um, any of the fermented products are going to be really good right now. Also, I would say, you know, if yogurt, obviously, and from a high fiber standpoint, really any of the produce items. I think that if I could couple that answer with an immune booster right now, the leafy greens are awesome. So spinach, um, kale, Swiss chard, these things are packed with vitamin C and beta carotene, which which boosts your immune system, but they also have fiber. So as long as you're drinking enough water, it's also very, very good for gut health. And I would love to hear what you're going to say. Yeah, I would say something very similar. I love that answer. The green leafies, man, it is so hard to beat that with a vitamin A, vitamin K, calcium, magnesium, right. all the nutrients there. And then I'll throw in bone broth. I think bone broth with all the collagen can be great for the gut. But green leafies and bone broth, man, that's a powerful combination along with the- And they go together. Yeah, along with the probiotic rich foods you just mentioned, uh, those are awesome. Um, all right, so one of the th other questions I had for you, you obviously do a lot in the kitchen. What about supplements? Is there anything specifically, again, I wanna learn more about your lifestyle. Are there any supplements that you take on a regular basis to help kind of cover your bases? Um, yes, and nowadays I have um, my kids and my husband and my in-laws and my siblings and my parents taking these very same supplements as well. So specifically because of what we're dealing with in COVID, um, I have everybody taking a multivitamin. I think it's really important just to sort of fill any nutritional gaps that might occur on a day-to-day -day basis. And I say that from somebody who eats really well. You know, we really do eat a varied, balanced, action-packed diet with all of the right stuff. But I still do like to take a multi. The next thing I'm taking these days um, is 500 milligrams of vitamin C. Again, I'm eating a ton of vitamin C. I always tell everybody a bell pepper a day is a great thing because one bell pepper has more than 200% of your vitamin C. And vitamin C, again, directly strengthens and helps then to maintain a healthy immune system. So um, I'm taking 500 milligrams of C. I'm taking vitamin D because I'm not outside enough getting the sunlight. And also most people are just in general, not getting enough vitamin D because there's not a lot of great foods that come packed with vitamin D. And vitamin D, again, is specifically related to an immune system, strengthening and boosting it. And then lastly, I'm not taking it regularly, but if I were to experience any kind of sniffles or a cold, I have zinc ready to start popping as well. So those, those are the supplements, the, the real stuff that I'm taking right now along with my family. I love it. Great recommendations there for supporting the immune system as well. And that was a question earlier, Joy, someone asked, and you mentioned one of the foods, bell peppers, but what are some of your favorite foods that uh, support your immune system? Any, any specific uh, foods? Uh, definitely. So there's like a bazillion because when we look at the immune system, we are looking for a vitamin C and beta carotene specifically. And like, again, not to take away, you mentioned um, magnesium, vitamin D is really important. So if I had to just off the top of my head name, maybe like five or six foods, I would go back to the leafy greens because they're basically like nature's multivitamin, right? They come packed with from A to Z, just about everything, but specific to immune boosting nutrients, they've got them. So it's the leafy greens. I would definitely say bell peppers are a huge standout. And then citrus fruits. So citrus fruits, again, have the vitamin C. Oranges, grapefruits, kiwis, pineapples. But I also want to give a big shout out to pink grapefruit because pink grapefruit not only has the C, it has the added benefit of beta carotene as well. Um, I'm also going to have to throw in their mushrooms. Mushrooms are awesome. They have antibiotics. Yeah properties that help us to fight off viruses like we're going through right now. And they also have some vitamin D, which is really nice. Um, salmon is the, the food of choice that is most rich in vitamin D. People, a lot of people don't realize that. They think all, you know, fortified milk. And fortified milk, like, is an okay source for vitamin D. But salmon it, and, and sardines are packed with vitamin D. Um, and garlic, garlic yeah. is really good for the immune system as well. It's a little stinky, but it's well worth it. <laughs> oh yeah. 
I mean, those are great recommendations. Fantastic. So let's talk about some, I want to talk more about some of these recipes in your cookbook. Um, switching gears a little bit, let's talk about desserts. What are one or two of your favorite desserts that you have in this book or a dessert that you're like, man, this is just, you know, this it's healthy, but it also just, it tastes, tastes phenomenal. Uh, well, I feel like I have an emotional relationship with every single one of the recipes. So it's like hard for me to pinpoint one. Um, I would say that um, a, a real superfood star would be the superfood ice pops because basically what I'm doing is I add in their berries and leafy greens and matcha and all sorts of things and then I um, blend it up and freeze them and all you taste is delicious naturally sweet luscious ice pops but they're so packed there's flax seeds in there like you name it but then I also like the dark chocolate bark I've got um, the sunflower seed butter cups that are my spin on Reese's peanut butter cups. So there's, I have a salted caramel um, shake that's really good without any added sugar whatsoever. It's a tough thing to ask me. <laughs> and these are great. I'm going to mention a few. And one of the things I love about your recipes too is they're simple. They're not, you know, it's not a hundred ingredients. They're non-complex and you're using superfoods in here. So these superfood ice pops You've got things like very simple berries, almond milk, banana, some green leafies and spinach, lime juice, honey. And then you add in some matcha powder, you know, an amazing superfood in there. So smart. I love the matcha powder. I make also we have a, I have a whole chapter of superfood cocktails and I want you to try at some point the matcha Moscow mule. Wow. So that, that's a nice one as well. And I really appreciate you talking about how simple they are because like I know and you know, if the recipes are complicated, nobody's going to make it. And if you make it once, you're not going to make it again. So it was really important to me that they didn't have obscure ingredients and that you could whip them together lickety split so that you wanted to work it in as part of your regular menu rotation. I have a lot of one sheet, um, one sheet entrees as well. Yeah, I, I wanted to I, I wanted to be able to share the kind of recipes that I would be making in the kitchen. And, and I love these too. Like for instance, you have dark chocolate truffles here, which look amazing. And there's four ingredients. That yeah. simple, that easy, and those look amazing. I love that. What what is what are you known for? Like what is your recipe? Oh gosh. Well, um, my I'll throw out a few. You know, one of the first, when I, I published my first cookbook, it was called The Real Food Diet Cookbook. This was back in maybe 2010, I think. Um, and uh, I had a recipe in there for blueberry pumpkin pancakes. And, yeah. you know, and it was, you know, coconut milk and it was this gluten-free flour and uh, just pumpkin and bl fresh blueberries. And so that was a, a recipe many years ago. But most of what I practice and teach now, it's a lot of Chinese medicine, you know. So it's a lot of... Uh, a lot of different types of superfood soups. I have like an immunity bowl that I recommend people, this is really good for people with like leaky gut or inflammatory bowel issues. I'll have them do a couple, um, about 64 ounces of chicken broth, some organic chicken, and then I'll have them add in a uh, shiitake mushroom. I'll have them add in a uh, cauliflower, kale, garlic, and onion, and, uh, and then miso. And then they'll cook that up in a crock pot. And that's a, you know, sort of, uh, one that uh, has been popular recently, but those are uh, those and are I love few. The slow cooker. I love the slow cooker, and I, I just love how we're totally on the same page with using food as medicine because it's it's something that everybody does have control over, right? We eat several times a day, and we get to choose what we put in our body. I know right now the versatility is not necessarily accessible, but we still do have huge control and eating the right foods in the right combinations can enable us to really catapult our bodies, our minds, our souls to the top of our game. Um, and it's so, it's simple. It's very, very doable. And it's also super delicious. I love it. One of the other things I know you're an expert and enjoy, I don't, you know, I, I, my mom told me you're not supposed to, and so I'm not going to, you know, ask somebody's age, but I just want to say oh. this. I, do I? <laughs> You, you, I'm old. You, you <laughs> look, I know that you, um, your skin looks so healthy and so young. And I think that's something that a lot of the audience would say, you know what, I want to have beautiful, healthy looking skin. And so, you know, the front of your book, you really talk about that. You really get into and talk about, 
here's how to slow that aging process. Here's how to look younger. Here's how to feel younger. What are some of your favorite foods and or recipes that you think, man, if somebody could start adding in just these, you know, this handful of foods or this one or two recipes, that's going to help them have better looking skin, better joints, and just, just age very gracefully. I think what, what I should also let you know is how I got to the foods. Cause like, yeah. you know, it, the, the, the reason that I wanted to write the book is because we do have so much compelling research on longevity, right? The people who live the longest and strongest, most healthiest lives. So basically what I've done is I vetted through all that research and then I came up with a long list of foods that were repeated over and over again by all of these pockets of people and then created recipes out of them. So these are people who have really figured out, um, maybe deliberately or maybe just because they have these super healthy lifestyle choices, how to slow down the aging process. And foods that we have seen over and over again repeated are the usual suspects the leafy greens, um, beans and lentils, a lot of plant-based foods, um, fatty fish, ironically enough, coffee and tea, nuts and seeds and berries. So these are really the foods when you're looking to promote a glowing complexion that you really do want to incorporate. One thing that everybody can do that I think is so ridiculously easy is to start sprinkling chia seeds on things because chia seeds um, first of all they have some protein they have some fiber so they're good for every part of your body but also they have these plant-based omega-3s and um, that's one of the reasons why i love to make things like overnight oats if you work in your chia with your oatmeal it could be gluten-free oatmeal whatever kind of oats you want to buy with all sorts of berries and interesting add-ons and you mash it up and you leave it in a mason jar you wake up in the morning and those chia seeds have gelled and enhanced the, the um, creaminess of that oatmeal. And so to your taste buds, it just excites them, right? It entertains them with all sorts of flavor combinations. But your skin benefits tremendously as well because it's getting those omega-3 fats from the chia seeds. It's getting all of the antioxidants from the berries. So it's just being super creative again. It's not, nothing difficult with the right foods in the right combinations. And man, you reap the benefits in a big way. I love it. Great advice. Get your omegas. You mentioned the herbal tea and coffee, getting more of those antioxidants, vegetables, fruits. These things are so, so important. Switching gears just a little bit, Joy, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, because I know you talk so much about nutrition, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on stress and how that affects our health and how it affects the way we age. And you know, we, we're living in a world today where unfortunately, a, a lot of these platforms today are really driving more fear. They're not thinking about the big picture. They're not thinking about, hey, how do we uh, comfort people and just share wisdom with people rather than driving them to panic. And so just curious, what, what are your, what's your biggest advice for people? One, how big of a deal do you think stress and fear and these emotions are? And number two, what are some things we can do to combat stress? Stress plays a gigantic role um, on elevating worry um, and, and also minimizing the way that we can live our best life. And I think it's really important that everybody works to suppress their stress level in whatever way that you can. I think one of the easiest ways that you can do this is getting enough sleep. And sleep has been directly linked to boosting your immune system. So everybody needs a different level of sleep. There's definitely genetics built into that. But I think if we can work hard, especially during this time of isolation and quarantine, to get some sort of structure with, into our sleep patterns, that would be a brilliant thing. And you need to really aim for anywhere from seven to eight hours a night and do whatever it takes because it's that important. Getting enough sleep will help to directly lower your stress level. Um, the second thing that everybody can do is to exercise. Exercise is like the ultimate stress squasher. It boosts your mood, it elevates your circulation, it strengthens your immune system, and it's not like you need to do hours and hours a day, but you do need to try to at least walk for 60 minutes a day. I mean, I'd like to say 30 minutes, but 
ideally, if you can get in a 60 minute walk at any point during the day, and by the way, it doesn't have to be continuous. You could break it up into bite-sized pieces as well. If you can get outside for some fresh air, even better, and that's good for your stress levels as well. But if you can't, you can even like be marching in place while you're watching the news, hopefully not depressing news. Better yet, binge watching Schitt's Creek, which is hilarious, by the way. We just watched all six seasons. It's very funny. Um, Or like even when you're on a conference call, a lot of times I'll take my conference calls outside so that I can walk and talk and and, uh, multitask. So I think getting enough sleep, getting enough exercise. And then another really simple thing that everybody can do to squash stress is to enjoy a cozy cup of chamomile tea. Chamomile is one of the most well-studied and documented medicinal plants that can truly help to ease tension um, and tame stress a little bit and anxiety. So, so, so those are some very doable, manageable things that everybody can do. And to the original question, stress is hugely related to not living your best life and aging more rapidly. So we, we do absolutely need to get a handle on, on our stress. I love it. It's great advice. And I think too, you know, when you look at a lot of these ancient forms of medicine, whether it be TCM, Ayurvedic, you know, the physicians always, you know, stress was at least 50% of the equation after, along with nutrition. In fact, it was probably the first thing that they, that they addressed with people. So again, I I couldn't agree more and sleep's a big deal. You know, if you're not sleeping, um, it really affects your health in a negative manner. In fact, there are several studies you and I have probably both read on if you're getting less than seven hours of sleep a night, triples your risk of catching a cold or flu, increases your risk of everything from right. diabetes to heart disease. And so again, it is, it is a big deal. It's great advice. Uh, yeah, and chamomile is great. It's great for your digestive system. It's great for reducing stress. I love that, uh, that tip there as well. Let's talk breakfast. You know, I think there's been a trend upward with things like intermittent fasting. And so, you know, I, and I'll just share my opinion on this. I think intermittent fasting is good for some people and not so good for others. I think that, you know, Chinese medicine, the oldest form of one of the oldest forms of medicine, you know, their recommendation is that we should eat breakfast. It's when our digestive system is strongest and most prepped to absorb nutrients. At the same time, there's lots of studies showing intermittent fasting can have benefits. So I think it's less about this um, not eating breakfast and more about maybe reducing your eating window a little bit, I think is, uh, is one of the more ideal things. But I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts on breakfast and any favorite breakfast recipes you have uh, in your new cookbook? I totally agree with everything that you just said. I think it's a case by case. And um, I do like the idea of intermittent fasting because we tend to start eating from the second we get up in the morning all the way through into well into the late evening, right before we brush our teeth. Some people eat even after they brush our teeth. So I think it makes us much more mindful about putting a limited window around eating. In terms of breakfast, I think it's a personal decision. Some people have low blood sugar in the morning, like they look forward to that meal in the morning and it gets them going. These people are definitely breakfast eaters. Other people feel like, "Mm, I'm not even hungry, should I eat when I'm not hungry? And then I, I think I would say to that, no, I think I would wait a little while until your hunger kicks in. And then you could have a late breakfast or an early lunch or a mid morning snack. It's a very, eating is a very personal relationship. And um, everybody needs to sort of find their own Zen place that makes them feel their optimal best. Um, but I do like the idea, like you said, about intermittent fasting, that it, it, it's a good exercise for anybody because it probably will show you that, wow, you are eating many, many, many hours throughout the day. And this sort of helps you become more mindful of, of that. Yeah. You know, what's really interesting about, again, just bringing back up this Chinese medicine principle, what they recommend is that you, and same same thing in Ayurveda, that you wake up, you have a hot glass of herbal tea, you then go for a brisk walk for 20 minutes, and then you come back and eat after you've moved, after you've had something warm. And then they recommend really not eating past 6.30 in the evening. I mean, their, their whole thing is eat dinner early, sort of fast throughout you know, especially you don't want to eat and then go lay down. So they kind of do it a little differently. Um, but I was looking through your cookbook here and I just want to point out a few of my favorites in here. 
blueberry oh, pie oatmeal. Man, that is good. So I was, I was going after a dessert for breakfast kind of feel yeah. with that one, but I didn't want to have any added sugar. So I really think I hit the money on this one. I use those chia seeds again. So basically what I do is you make your oatmeal. You could do your oatmeal on the stovetop. I like it on the stovetop because it gets a little bit creamier and I have more control over um, you know stopping it at the exact thickness that I want my oatmeal but you could certainly make it in the microwave as well. But um, the magic really happens with the blueberry topper. And I take fresh blueberries or frozen blueberries that are thawed, and I just add my chia seeds and one tablespoon of 100% juice. It could be cranberry juice, it could be orange juice, whatever kind of juice you have in the fridge. And then you microwave it for about two minutes. Put a paper towel over the top or some sort of microwave safe cover you take it out and you're going to be thinking like, Joy, this is sludge. Like what is happening here? Trust me, you give it a stir and you let it sit for a couple of minutes and it thickens into this like ooey gooey blueberry pie filling. It is so sweet. It's so satisfying because the chia seeds, again, when, when they sit, the chia seeds it, um, absorb all of that liquid and swell nine times their size and it creates this jammy jelly blueberry pie filling consistency and then you put it all over within your oatmeal and then what I like to do is I add on toasted slivered almonds for some crunch and mm, it's really good wow. <laughs> you guys need this recipe <laughs> That's awesome one of the other things I mean you have so many good great recipes here that are made from uh, Foods that are really good for the digestive system. We've got a pumpkin pie, maple oatmeal bake here again. We've got a carrot cake, pancakes. And then we've got these winter waffles with root. You're literally waffles with root vegetables. That is so creative. Oh, I love that one. And you know what I use? I use chickpea flour with loads of beets and there's zucchini in there and carrots. Yeah. And, and if, Whatever vegetable you don't like or you don't have, I show you that you can swap in another. And then for, like, for people who are feeling carb sensitive, they're low in carb. There's a lot of egg whites in there as well. So they're rich in protein and they're super filling. And I, I'm a little biased to dill. So I like to add some fresh dill in there to amp up the flavor. But certainly, you know, people can put in whatever seasonings they like. I love it. It's great. You know, root vegetables are obviously, you know, full of, most of them are full of beta carotene, all these nutrients you mentioned earlier, great for your immune system. And so I love this. It is great advice here. Josh, we need to cook. We, we need a cooking you, party. We do. You know what? Hey, next time you're in Nashville, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a, a cooking party. We'll have Pam over. I know our mutual good friend and, uh, I would and love you'll get to meet that. the new, uh, you'll get to meet our, uh, our, 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 our new baby daughter, Arwen. So I would love that. Now, how many kids do you have, Joy? I have three kids. I have grown-up babies. So my older daughter is 25, and my son is, her name is Jesse, and my son is Cole, and he is 22. And then my baby, who she's a sophomore at college, but she's doing her classes online right now. I think she just finished her last final today. She is 19. Wow, her name is okay. Aiden Jane. Oh man, I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then of course we have Gatsby. Gatsby is my furry daughter. Oh my gosh. We got, we've got two dogs as well. What's funny is I was not a dog person when I married Chelsea at all. Like we never had dogs growing up. It was never a, a pet person. And then we have a couple of King Charles Cavalier Spaniels now and we just, oh. man, just love them. And so, and Gatsby, just so you know, is a Cavachon. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's We're awesome. We're partially related. So we, there you go. I'll tell them about their cousin. Um, we, uh, oh my gosh, we were surprised. I know this is totally off topic, but just now that we're talking about it, we were really concerned about our dogs when the, when the new baby got here. This, again, this was just less than two weeks ago. And um, we thought because they just want attention, you know, they like their attention. And we were kind of worried about, okay, how are they going to react to, to our one, our baby? And it's been amazing. Like they have been so protective. It's almost like they're an extension of Chelsea. They're protective. They're just like, they're like, Isn't like that... sit around and guard her all day. It's just been the sweetest thing. That is so sweet. And I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. And that the three of them are going to grow up to be the best, best of friends. 
Oh yeah. Uh, we can see it. Um, I'm going to ask you another nutrition question before I do though, we're just a, just the last couple questions here for exercise. You know, you talked about walking earlier. Do you have a preferred form of exercise that you recommend people do? Uh, what are your, what are your thoughts on, on that? Um, I'm glad that you brought that up. So I say walking because I just feel like it's, it's so ridiculously easy, right? Um, it doesn't cost anything. Anybody can do it. You can go at your own pace. And if you want, you can multitask at the same time. So there's no excuses. Anybody can actually walk. Um, I like everything though. I love yoga. I like Pilates. Um, I like running. I like tennis, hiking, biking, swimming. There's not one exercise that I'm not in love with. And I also do sort of like a strength training routine. It takes about 15 minutes. I try to, I, I try to do it every day. It usually ends up about five days a week. And um, it, that's just really a combination of um, toning and strengthening planks, crunches, push-ups, um, some stretches, core work, things like that. But like a long-winded answer to your question is, I like every single exercise that there is on the planet, everything. What about you? Yeah, I'm with you. I think the key is to move. You know, like mm -hmm. my wife, Chelsea, she's a certified strength trainer and yoga instructor. So like we, and it just really depends on the season. I think in the winter, we do a little bit more weight training and that sort of thing. In the summer, we do a little bit more cardio. And, uh, you know, it, I think it just depends on, on the year. But the thing for us is we're, we're with you. It's just, man, just get out and move. That's the key. And it makes you happy. It just makes you happy. I, whenever I can, I really like to do it first thing in the morning because it, it automatically sets me in the right direction to crush the day. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, or I feel like I, I, I have already done something really good for myself and I want to continue to forge forward with many, many more good things. And I think it's also an adrenaline rush. I don't know if it's the endorphins or I'm like, I'm just so happy that I already did it <laughs> and I accomplished it. And so it just makes me smile, but it, it, it's such a great day starter. I'm with you. It's kind of, you know, every day I wake up, I first do my spiritual triathlon, you know, just working on spiritual growth and then go right to the workout. And then after I do those two things in the morning, I just feel like a champ. I'm I agree. With you. So let's talk about, uh, I want you to share your three biggest recipes that if people can start just adding these into their weekly routine, you feel like, and this is going to be a game changer for their house. So again, I want you to wrap up here because I'm so excited about this book. I want to just mention this for everybody watching. Joy has a new book out. By the way, if you didn't know, Joy is a number one New York Times bestselling author. She is one of the hosts uh, who's brought on uh, regularly on the Today Show where she is their health expert for the Today Show, and she just wrote a new book here, Superfood, 150 Recipes for Eternal Youth. And as I mentioned, the thing I love about this is the recipes are so short, so simple, <laughs> yet they're creative and different. Like you're, the, the recipes I've seen in here, I actually have not seen anywhere else, which is awesome. So I wanna encourage you guys, go online right now to amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com, Buy this new book. This is Dr. Axe approved. I've gone through this. These ingredients are healthy. There's no sugar. There is, uh, you know, or, or very low if she's using any natural sugar, even things like honey. But for the most part, it's fruit, it's vegetables, it's superfoods. It really, this incorporates just as many superfoods as almost any recipe book uh, or cookbook I've seen out there. So I want to encourage everybody, check it out. But Joy, what are three of your favorite game-changing recipes from your new book? Oh my gosh, this is a really tough question. Um, okay, so one, one I will say, because of the versatility of it, would probably be the protein bagels because everybody loves starchy bagels, but they hate the refined carb and the calories. So I figured out how to make it with just three ingredients. And you can use that very same recipe to spread it out into a pizza dough. And then you can build whatever type of pizza you want on there as well. So wow. I took that, the protein bagel recipe, I took it and I actually made a pizza with roasted carrots and caramelized onion. That is amazing. So I love that one. Um, there's a Moroccan chicken that you make in one pot that I absolutely love because I think um, 
the complexity of all of the different seasonings, how they come together. And it just gives you this like great big bold flavor. And it makes you feel like you just ordered it in a restaurant yet. It took you about 20, 30 minutes to throw together. So I love that one. And I never thought about this question before. I guess I also love, I'm going to pick one with fish. Um, either there's a one sheet salmon with herb in, infused um, sauce that's really, really delicious. There's another one sheet with a turmeric wine sauce that is so great because it has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. Um, and then anything with chocolate. I there think I'm, with there the last category, there's like 50 chocolate recipes and the blackberry margarita. That's a good one too. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Well, those are great recipes. Again, I noticed there is lots of dark chocolate here in the back and there's some great comfort dishes. You know, the eggplant Parmesan, looking at oh, that. One. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great dish. You're not, and you talked about your Alfredo sauce using cashews. I love that creative idea as well. It's so, so good. I want to encourage everybody again, run out and check out Joy's new book. It's fantastic. Make sure to tune in to today's show and, and see her as the expert on nutrition there on a regular basis and in health. And I want to say, Joy, man, it has been so good having you on today. I know Pam has been raving about you over the years. I know I've been so impressed anytime I've been you know, uh, watching TV and, and seeing you on there as well with your expert advice. So I want to say, hey, I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show today. Oh, Josh, and I want to say right back to you, it is clear why everybody loves you. You are so lovely. You're so encouraging. Um, you make complicated information seem accessible and easy. So thank you for having me. And I, I hope that we do get to cook together and I need to see that baby and your dogs and meet your wife. <laughs> you know, it's going to happen. I'll get out to Nashville. You need to come to New York. Deal? Deal. You got it. Thanks everybody for watching. I want to say, hey, thanks so much uh, for, uh, for tuning in today. Again, thanks to Joy. And again, check out her new book. And we'll be back next week with another podcast. Thanks for watching, everybody. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.